Hello students, how are you? Our goal for today's lesson is to detect biases and propaganda devices used by speakers and writers. What do we mean by bias? Bias is when a statement reflects a partiality, preference, or prejudice for or against a person, object, or idea. Bias is when a writer or speaker uses a selection of facts, choice of words, and the quality and tone of description to convey a particular feeling or attitude. An author shows bias by leaving out information or by altering facts to force the reader to have a certain opinion about a subject. Here are some examples of biased statements. First is, Boracay is the most beautiful tourist attraction in the Philippines. This is a biased statement because it is based only in the speaker's opinion and is not backed up by any evidence. The speaker may be someone who loves beaches than any other attractions, or maybe a resident of Boracay who advertises the place. The next example of a biased statement is, These hamburgers taste horrible. This biased statement was made by someone who doesn't like the taste of one or more of the ingredients in the hamburger. It is a personal opinion, not an objective statement based on neutral evidence. Nowadays, we are exposed to visual media and various references found in different websites. As students, you should know how to identify which among them is biased. Biased information tries to change your mind or your thinking and your decision, so being aware of bias and knowing how to identify, analyze, and assimilate them properly is a skill you need to master. Another thing that can sway our opinion with words and intent to control and change our decisions are the use of propaganda devices or techniques. Propaganda refers to the spreading of information, ideas, or rumor in a way that is meant to make people accept them. The term usually suggests that the ideas are false or misleading. It makes use of a collection of devices and tricks intended to influence your thinking. Here are some examples of propaganda. Why is it important for us to know how to detect bias and propaganda devices? Again, learning how to recognize word choices to detect biases and propaganda devices used by speakers, writers, or advertisers is very important. Since biased information and propaganda devices are used to influence people to believe, buy, or do something, Knowing this helps you see the purpose of a text. Know if the source or information is reliable and accurate. And it can go a long way towards your smart choice of products and services, based on your actual experiences and not just because of the effects of propaganda. Let us begin by understanding the different propaganda techniques or devices that are commonly used. First is name-calling. This device or technique consists in giving a bad name to a person, a group, an idea, or an event. Name-calling advertising is the most common between two brands that are similar, well-known, and have a loyal fan base. Understandably, they need to lure consumers from the other side to their side. Advertisements use name-calling when one product puts down a similar product by saying theirs is superior in some way. Political candidates also use name-calling to make their opponent appear undesirable. Let us take a look at this example. Although the name of the rival brand, McDonald's, is not found anywhere in the ad, their signature Big Mac box has been used. And the message is clear. The wrapper is so big that it can't fit into the box that holds the Big Mac. So basically, you are getting a bigger burger than the famous Big Mac. Here is another example. With this, we have the impression that Coca-Cola is better than Pepsi. The next propaganda device is glittering generality. Under this technique, the propagandist uses some attractive or impressive words or ideas which mislead the people or make them want to buy the product, try the service or become affiliated with the brand. Some examples of these glittering words include hope, change, possibility, justice, and others that give off an extremely positive vibe or hype you up among other things. 
Let us take a look at this example. The use of the word better in this ad is what triggers a positive reaction. We are always looking for ways to make things better, make experiences better, and that is what this ad promises. The next device is transfer. This is a technique in which advertiser tries to transfer the good or bad feelings you have associated with something to their brand, product, or service. For example, you see an ad about a food chain. It doesn't move you, nor does it make you particularly hungry. Just then, it mentions that all the ingredients used by the brand are organic. If you are a supporter of organic brand, or organic foods, this will call out to you in a way no other message could have, and you will associate the positive feelings you have about organic food with a brand. Similarly, if an ad uses a national song, the flag of your country, or any other element that awakens the love you have for your country inside of you, your patriotism will take over. You will associate the feeling of love you have for your country with a brand and that will, of course, improve its image in your eyes. The next technique is testimonial. With this technique, advertisers use the testimonials of influencers, authority figures, or experts in the field to convince you that their products is worth your money. This is mainly because if a famous person or one who has a lot of knowledge and experience in the niche is vouching for it, there has got to be something that sets it apart. Here are some examples. Since Marian Rivera is known for being beautiful for most of us and Manny Pacquiao is known for being strong, we have the impression that the products that they are advertising may affect us the same way they did to them based on their advertisement. Another technique is plain fog. The plain fog technique is the use of ordinary people to promote a product or service. The goal is to show that the product or service is of appeal and value to everyone. Here is an example. An ordinary mother washing clothes. For sure, many mothers can relate to her. The plain fog technique is in contrast to the use of celebrities in advertisements. This approach is increasingly becoming one of the more effective propaganda devices you can come across today. Many people nowadays crave real experiences. When applied to advertising, this basically means that they want to see how a particular product or service brought value to a regular human like themselves. Next is bandwagon. Under this technique, the propagandist advertises that since everybody is doing a thing, therefore you may as well do it. Advertisers know that it is human nature to not want to be one left out. They know that if they convince you that everyone else is buying their product or using their service, you will want to jump on the bandwagon too. Here is an example. McDonald's have served 99 billion people. There must be something special there, right? And you would want to miss out on that. So you stop and grab a meal. In our next example, Coca-Cola tries to convince Ad that everybody knows this drink. And since none of us wants to be left out, we buy and try it too. The last technique is card stocking. In card stocking technique, an advertiser omits any information that may affect their image negatively and includes just the information that will lure people into the trap. Here are some examples. Remember, in card stocking technique, the true facts are twisted and colored by the propagandist to suit his interest and impress his listeners. Thus, a politician may weave a story and present it as a true event. As a learner, you should be able to know that media or sources of information such as newspaper, magazine articles, videos often have a bias or agenda behind their message. Being able to analyze content to determine its angle is key to staying informed. Some materials are designed to inform and will try to represent all sides of an issue accurately and fairly, but other types, like propaganda, are deliberately biased or misleading, and are created to promote a particular point of view. So, keep the following questions in mind not to fall on the trap of biased and propaganda devices. First is, what facts has the author omitted? Next. What additional information is necessary? 
What words create positive or negative impressions? And what impression would I have if different words have been used? Here are some indicators of a biased source. First is, it is heavily opinionated or one-sided. It relies on unsupported or unsubstantiated claims. It presents highly selected facts that lean to a certain outcome. It pretends to present facts but offers only opinion. It uses extreme or inappropriate language. It tries to persuade you to think a certain way with no regard for factual evidence. The author is unidentifiable, lacks of expertise, or writes on unrelated topics. It is entertainment-based or a form of parody or satire. And it tries to sell you something in disguise. I hope that you learned from this lesson. For sure, you are wiser now than before. Thank you so much and see you in our next lesson.